welcome back to another TechMinds video. So I had a few people ask me if I was able to share my code for the dashboard control I made for my QO100 narrowband and DATV transceiver. Now in this video, I'll talk about how this was made and how it was interfaced electronically to the equipment. Now, as mentioned in my videos, I changed from originally using an Arduino with Ethernet shield over to using Node Red running on a Raspberry Pi. Now, I won't go into how to install Node Red on a Raspberry Pi, but it's extremely easy as you only need to issue one install command, as shown here. Now, I'll leave a link to this page in the description below so it's nice and easy to follow. So, what does my QO100 dashboard do? Well, starting on the left under the driver tab, this allows me to turn on and off a 12 volt supply to my RF driver board, which in essence is how I start and stop transmitting to the satellite. Two gauges are shown here, one which shows a voltage and the other which shows a current in milliamps. Now these gauges take data from a device called an INA219. Now the INA219 has a supply voltage of 5 volts, which is taken from the Pi. Now its data connection is via I2C, which is just two wires connected to the Pi, the SDA and SCL connections. Now the great thing about I2C is that they can be connected in parallel. As long as they have different addresses, you can communicate with each device independently. The driver amp is connected across the shunt resistor and when power is applied to the driver amplifier, the INA219 reports back to the Pi the current consumption and voltage. The INA219 specification says that it can measure between 0 and 26 volts and up to 3.2 amps. However, when using the INA219 with node red, the node produced a negative voltage reading when going above 16 volts. So in my case, I only use the INA219 for the 5 volt rail, 12 volt rail and driver power board within my setup. Now I think this is an issue with the INA219 node on node red rather than an issue with the device itself. I guess I could try this on an Arduino to make sure, but I haven't done that as yet. So how do we add the gauges on the dashboard and grab the data from the INA219? First, you need to add the INA219 node from the palette manager. Now, once added, you can then drag this onto the flow. Just double click on the node and you'll be presented with some options. Now here, we need to define which I2C address is being used. Once set, click update. You'll notice two outputs on the INA219 node. One is the voltage and the other is the current consumption value. Now this is not the current consumption of the INA219, but it's the current consumption of the device connected in line with the shunt resistor. Now we can drag a couple of gauges onto the flow and then join the output from the INA219 node to each gauge. Now once you deploy, you can now view those gauges on the UI page, which is just the same IP address and port number of your node red installation, but with forward slash UI at the end. Now let's talk about the two buttons on the bottom left, driver on and driver off. Now these buttons control a USB HID relay board. The HID board I have has two relays on it, one to control the power to the driver and the other to switch the LMB voltage. As you can see here, the HID relay board is connected to the Pi via a single USB cable. The USB cable also provides power to energize and switch the relays. With the USB HID module connected, you can now install the node to control this. Within Palette Manager, we can install the no red USB HID relay node. Now once that's installed, we can drag one onto the dashboard. Now my driver one is connected to relay two. So what will happen here is this drop down list, it will show you how many relays are on that HID board. It does detect it automatically, which is quite nice. Now to change the state of that relay, we need to drag on a button. Once you've dragged on a button, we can go in and have a look at the settings. All we need to do is give it a name, a label, and then change the payload. Now the payload for this button will either be true or false. That's because you can set it as a Boolean here. 
Obviously, buttons can do lots of other different things like send a string, a number, even a JSON or even timestamp or switch to another flow. But as we just need a Boolean, i.e. a true or a false, payload type is set to a Boolean. So the driver on button has a payload of true. If we now open the driver off button, the payload is false. You then drag a connection to the relay and that's how it works. You click deploy and then on the dashboard, you can use on or off. So as you can see, there's a few more things on this flow which I haven't spoken about just yet. So let's just first talk about the Pluto here, this section down here. The firmware that I've got installed on the Pluto is non-standard. It's a custom firmware. And within this firmware, it provides a MQTT broker, which we can get some information out of. So for example, using the MQTT in node dragged over, if I double click on one, we can subscribe to a specific topic. Obviously, you would need to configure the server settings as well, which will be the IP address of your Pluto. Now, obviously, depending on what firmware version you've got installed may depend whether this feature is enabled or not. However, I have three MQTT ins because I'm going to be monitoring three different topics coming from the MQTT broker, which is running on the Pluto. And here we take out the FPGA temperature. We take the payload and we just send that to a custom gauge. If you like those gauges, just search for canvas-gauge on Google and you'll be sure to find them. We also get the buffer state and the net bitrate as well, which is mainly used for when I'm using DATV. Now in the middle of the flow here, we've got a section where we're using an ADS1115 module. Now this is actually an analog to digital converter, but I'm using it for two different features. So the first one at the top is connected to a thermistor module. That thermistor module outputs an analog signal and then that feeds into the ADS ADC. Through some calculations in code, we can work out the degrees in Celsius that a thermistor's reading. The ADS1115 ADC is actually four channel. So I'm using another channel for the LMB voltage. And the reason why I'm using an ADS1115 for measuring voltage is because LMB voltage will go above 16 volts. And if you remember what I said earlier about the INA219 issue above 16 volts, then that wouldn't work. So I'm using it here. What I'm also doing is using a voltage undivider. This is where you just put in the values of the resistor one and two, and it works out what the voltage should be. But the last node down the bottom here is a bit more complicated. Now this provides information to show this here where it says SAT locked or PLL locked. I run a Leo Bodner GPSDO, which provides a 40 megahertz clock signal straight to my Pluto. This keeps it bang on frequency and doesn't drift. Occasionally, this may become unlocked and I need to see that before I start transmitting. So the way that I get that information is by using a script, a Python script provided by Leo Bodner. That Python script is then triggered by this inject node here on the left. With an interval of every 10 seconds, it will trigger this script. Now what happens is when it runs this script on the Pi, the output from that script is captured and it's outputted here on one of these lines. So using a function, I'm taking the payload and just literally stripping the information that I need. So character 26 and then 14 characters. And then also doing the same for the PLL status at position 40 and 14 characters. And then that just then outputs to a text label, which is then shown on the dashboard. So it's quite simple, but also quite complicated. You obviously need to spend some time getting this Python script working because it's not straightforward. There's quite a lot of prerequisites that you need to run before it will work. Now, as mentioned before in my other videos, the Leo Bodner GPS is connected directly to the Pi. So it provides a data connection and also a power connection. So it's powered all the time. So there we go, guys, just an overview of how I put together my node red dashboard for my QO100 transceiver. Now, I know this has been quite in depth and quite complicated, maybe for some, but hopefully it's triggered enough interest for you to go and install it and see what you can build with it. 
Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.